this video, I'm going to be going over several new features and updates in the 2024 Adobe Photoshop update. You're not going to want to miss this video. Let's get straight into it. So in order to even access all of the new features that Adobe Photoshop now has, you are going to need to update to the newest version of Photoshop. In order to do that, I'm going to show you in a second, and you want to make sure that you're updating to version 25.1. That's the latest version of Photoshop. So in order to update your Photoshop, you're going to go to Creative Cloud Desktop. You're going to go to Apps, click into there. And then next after that, you're going to see updates. You're going to click into there. And whenever you need to update an app, you're going to see that it will say update next to Photoshop. It's going to ask you now or later, and I always choose now. And obviously it's going to update. So wait until it updates. And then from there, you're able to launch Photoshop. So once you launch Photoshop, you're quickly going to notice several differences in new features. You're going to quickly notice that Photoshop and Photoshop beta are basically now are one. So basically Photoshop and Photoshop beta got married and are all in one app, <laughs> literally all in one app. They are uh, pretty uh, interconnected at, at this point because generative fill is now out of beta. So with that being said, you'll notice every time that you launch Photoshop, you are now able to use generative fill within regular Photoshop. Hence you will see the contextual taskbar. So if you've already used uh, generative fill or Photoshop beta before you will realize that the contextual taskbar will be present whenever you're editing and it tends to move around. Now the only way we're able to keep it in put or in place I mean is by hitting these three dots on the side and pinning the bar in position. Now it will stay put. Now in the past you would pin the bar in position uh, let's say you were editing a photo and then you would save that work and close out of Photoshop and then you would restart Photoshop and carry on with another project and continue on with the previous one and you the contextual taskbar would pop up again however it would not be pinned in position it would move around once again which would be super annoying so I'm gonna demonstrate this right now in real time I've closed out of my project and I'm going to relaunch Photoshop and see if the bar comes back still pinned in position. So as you can see, the bar is still in the same spot where we left it. And if I check by clicking on the three dots, you will see it still says pin bar in position with it checked, meaning it is still in position. Though so there's three main uses that most people use generative fill for. That is one to extend uh, images, another is to add objects, and another is obviously to remove objects. So I'm briefly just gonna, I'm not gonna demonstrate all those to you because I have previous videos going more into depth on generative fill. I have a whole playlist if you're interested in learning more about generative fill and how to use it. But for this video specifically, I am just gonna show you some new updates that have been made to it thus far. Go ahead and make a selection. I'm gonna take my rectangular marquee tool and we are going to swap out our baby and stroller. I know, I know what you're saying. Oh, not the baby. Not the baby, how could you? This is just for example purposes. So let's see. So mom is obviously holding on to the stroller. I come over here in my text prompt and I'm gonna write dog on a leash. And then I'm gonna click generate. And then we're gonna watch and see what happens. So now something else is new within Photoshop. Every time you generate something, you will notice there are helpful tips Every time you use generative fill, that will help you get the most out of generative fill and how to use it properly. So we have our dog, and when you come over to here to the right hand side, it, under the properties section, you will notice there's always three variations whenever you're using generative fill. And if you don't like what's generated, you can always of course generate it once again. But I wanted to show you guys something else that is an update uh, or a new feature within Photoshop. Now, if you just come over here where these four little squares are, you can actually click onto there and look at that. It makes the, the thumbnails for the variations larger. So if you have poor eyesight like me, you don't have 20-20 eyesight, this is definitely super helpful if you're starting to see 
these small little squares for the variations. You can make them bigger. So the next new feature I would like to talk about is Synergy Expand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my crop tool. Then you're going to come up top and make sure that Generative Expand is selected under Fill. And then we're just going to take our uh, crop tool and we're just going to gradually expand our image outward to where we want it. Now, if you have a specific aspect ratio you have in mind, then you can just use change the aspect ratio as well if you prefer that method. I don't really have one for this image. I'm just sort of freeballing it. So uh, I'm pretty happy with how it looks right now. You can come over here and type something in the text prompt, but I personally am not for this image. I'm just going to let it turn into fill AI, kind of generate whatever it wants based on what's already present. So now we have our newly generated, newly expanded, once vertical, now horizontal photo. Now we have three variations as usual, and I'm not gonna go through these right now. What I wanted to show you is that as I'm zooming into this photo, obviously the newly generated area that's been expanded, not high res, this is low resolution. So as I'm zooming in, you can see it's, the quality is much different. It's very blurred and, and fuzzy compared to the center of the photograph where it's very crisp and 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 very high resolution so there is a way to get around that there are several videos on youtube that tackle how to resolve this issue doing it piece by piece by building on it in small squares so another new feature update that's going on is that adobe is introducing something called generative credits so starting november 1st of this year 2023 whatever you use when using generative fill in Photoshop will cost you one credit. So these, so let's say you use generative fill one time, it will cost you one credit, for example. You will get a set number of credits based on whatever uh, subscription plan you are on. So across different plans, you will get a different set amount or amount number of amount of credits depending on which one you have. So if you go online to Adobe's website, where it talks about frequently asked questions about tentative credits, you will find all the information outlined there in detail if you have any questions about this. So when you scroll down on their website and you're gonna see where it says creative cloud individual plans, and then you it will actually show you how many credits for each for uh, every single different plan there is, in case you were curious about the amount of credits. For whichever plan you have so for example for the creative cloud all apps plan you will get 1000 monthly credits for the creative cloud single app plan you will get 500 month monthly credits and so on so you're probably asking well what happens after you i've used all my credits well according to adobe it just gets slower. So you might be using generative fill and you'll notice it gets a little bit slower after you've exhausted all your credits. However, you still will be able to access it and use it. It just will perform a little bit slower. How much slower? I don't know. That's for you to find out if you exhaust all your credits. However, if you have one of the first two plans, I do believe that 1,500 credits is quite a bit. So I don't really see anyone going past that within a month unless you're using AI quite religiously. <laughs> so another new feature or update within Photoshop is called content credentials. So basically anytime you use AI in your project, it will be tagged as such, no matter if you save it as a JPEG or PNG. This is to prevent the spread of misinformation and to provide transparency on who created an image. To access or to view content credentials, you can do so by going to window up top and then selecting content credentials. And then from this panel, you can click on the blue button, which says enable content credentials. So once you click that blue button, you're gonna see this is the information that will be shared. So you automatically will have to include generative fill AI information, but you can disable all the other things, such as your social media, if you have it connected or the edits you made. And when you click on to preview, you will notice it says content summary. This image combines multiple pieces of content. At least one was generated with an AI tool. And then as you scroll down, it says ingredients and then it'll have your photo 
and then it'll say apps or devices use obviously adobe photoshop and then it will say then it will say adobe firefly also when you save and you export uh image so you will notice that it says content credentials beta a content credential will be automatically applied for adobe firefly generative ai use transparency so this is going to be seen every time you export, whether you do it in JPEG or PNG. And just a disclaimer, also, if you like to see the content credentials of any file, you can go to this website, contentcredentials.org slash verify. And here you're able to literally upload any, any file, any photo or image, any type of file, and you are able to see the content credentials for that. And here you'll notice I've done this with one of these files that I used within this example for this video, just to show you exactly how it works. All right, so this is probably my favorite update in Photoshop thus far is the remove tool. Obviously, it's nothing new. The tool itself is nothing new, but it definitely got a facelift. So let's just talk about the brand new functionality of the remove tool. So I'm just gonna brush over the object that I would like to be removed and just let Photoshop do its thing. Wow, look at that. So there is a little bit of something still left there. So. If it does happen to leave a little something, you just go over it again, sh uh, shade over or brush over it, and then it'll remove that as well. Let's let's do it right now. Now look at that, perfect. It's like the other coffee was never even there. Now we can use it this way. However, you notice I did have to go over it one more time. So a more effective way to use the remove tool now is to first create a new layer. You do that by doing Command J or Control J if you are in Windows. After that, you select the remove tool, select or turn on sample all layers. And then all you have to do this time is just make an outline or circle around the objects you want to move. And look at that, Photoshop automatically fills it in for me. I don't have to do that. You no longer need to entirely brush over your an object to remove it. Instead, you can just simply loop around an object and Photoshop will fill it in automatically. So all I gotta say is that this remove tool is now way more efficient and faster than ever before. And Removing objects in Photoshop will never be such a headache and a half, which I so appreciate. And voila! Alright, so now we are finally down to our last feature in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up top to where it says Filter, and I'm going to select Camera Raw Filter. Now from there, a new box or window will open and you just scroll down and you'll see lens blur and it'll say early access. And then you're gonna click apply and you're gonna notice a little circle. That's because it's basically loading or buffering. So you're gonna give it a second because it's still in beta. So it takes a little while for it to load so that you can actually use it. So just be patient. And then when it's fully blue, that little tiny circle where my mouse is, then of course use the feature. <laughs> All right, so you'll notice there is a blur amount slider. And if you look at our image, it's already been slightly blurred because right now the, the blur amount is slightly is at 50%. So if you want to adjust it, um, you can do so if you want it more blurred or if you want it less blurred. So I'm just going to do it all the way to see just how much it blurs out the background to see if I like that or want it less blurred. You can just kind of play around with that and see the amount that you would like it to be blurred because that blur amount slider is to either increase or decrease the amount of blur. Now, when you come over here where it says bokeh, you have different shapes of bokeh that you can use depending on how you like the bokeh to look in your image. So you can play around with that and see which bokeh you like the best. 
And then when you come over to the boost slider, you're able to control the bokeh effects intensity and how pronounced you want them to appear in your image. So that's how to use all three of those uh, features within the lens blur. Now, if we scroll down, you'll see something called focal range. You're probably wondering what that is. So by default, Photoshop automatically sets the focal range using AI powered subject detection, which is what this icon indicates where it has the person. And you'll notice that the focal range box has yellow to blue colors, indicating the near and far local ranges over your image. So in order to see this visual representation over your image, all you have to do is check the visual depth box. So you can manually set the focal range by enabling this button and clicking or dragging over the photo. And if you want to make the box wider to have more areas in focus, you can do that. And then if you make it, if you make the box thinner, you're able to blur more, more areas. I really hope you got some value out of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions, share with a friend, and I will catch you guys in the next one.